no matter what you want to buy. You'll find it all on the hub. The SME Market Hub. Buy, sell, list, connect. Fluted Pumpkins, also known as Ogo, is a tropical vine leaf grown in West Africa. It contains loads of good proteins, fats and oils and is used in popular dishes such as Egusi. My name is Chef Eros and this is Dishing Out with Ndani TV. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to use ogo in another different way. Popularly it's been used for soups predominantly, but today I'm going to be teaching you how to do something called pairing, where I take ingredients from one region and I pair it with ingredients from another region. Nigeria is my home country and I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a Nigerian pizza. So let's start cooking. First thing I want to do is my goat meat. Now, why do I want to do that? Because goat meat takes the longest to cook. All right, so we take our pot, medium heat, all right, let that heat up a little, and then I'm going to wash my goat meat through so I can get out any excess blood. Now, my goat meat has been cut into little cubes, and that, those little cubes will help it cook really quick. So my goat meat is in there. The next thing I want to do is get my onions and garlic for the nice essence and just one clove of garlic, all right? Squash it through. All right, that's nice and good. In there, nice slices of onions to do. All right, so that's heating up nicely. And now, seasoning. I'll start with two cubes of seasoning salt, about a teaspoon of salt, you can add some more to taste. Some dry pepper, again, about a teaspoon. So, scotch bonnet, okay. and that's going in there. With a wooden spoon, I'm just going to stir this, cover this, and let it cook on medium to high heat for about 15 to 20 minutes, and we'll check it constantly, tossing and turning, just to get all the sides cooked through. So, the sauce. I'm making a really traditional palm oil based sauce. Um, unlike the Italians who would use basil, tomatoes, and olive oil to make a sauce. I'll put in this guy. There we go. So all of these are going into a blender. All right, so tomatoes go down so that the, the juices from the plum tomatoes will get the blender going. And now my fresh tomatoes, my tatashe. And of course, from some fiery spice, scotch bonnets. Ah, oh, one last ingredient, onions. And there we go. So that's already blended down. Now I'm going to get the cooking of my sauce going. And to do that, I need a saucepan. Over a cooker. So I'm going up to medium heat. I'm going to be using about six tablespoons of palm oil here. So while the palm oil is hitting, I'm going to take a quarter of an onion and one clove of garlic again. This time around, I want them to be nicely chopped. Okay. Okay. Smell that palm oil. So, garlic, and then the onions, careful, it would splatter. I'm just going to stir this around for the onions and the garlic to caramelize in there. Careful. Just 
cover that. I'm gonna have that cook through. I'm going to season this with two cubes of seasoning salt, one teaspoon of salt, about a teaspoon of black pepper, half a teaspoon of white pepper, and just stir that through again. So while that's cooking for at least another five to 10 minutes, I'm going to start off prepping my toppings. Now the toppings are all the different things you want to put on top of your pizza. Um, here I'm going to be using a variety of peppers, green peppers, yellow peppers, red peppers, some spring onions, some sweet corn, and then of course my goat meat and cheese. Remember that your pizza has to look beautiful and appetizing. So what we're going to do here is cut our peppers in different shapes and sizes just to, to give it some, some different textures and, and look, a good look to it. So, sweet corn. And last, but definitely not the least, cheese. Five leaves of ogu. And what's going to happen now is my ugu is going to go into my tomato sauce. Just right at the end, so you don't overcook your vegetables, which is where we are. Right about now. Check that out. See how reduced it is now? It smells heavenly. So the ugu. Sprinkle that round to the top, not too much. See? It's the last bit on the chopping board. It's okay. all of it. Right there. Reduce the heat to really low and just cook for another two minutes and then it's done. So at this point, you want to check if you have enough seasoning going around. Have a bite. Mm. And our goat meat. Okay ready for topping. Mm. Now we want to start off with our pizza dough. And to make our pizza dough, we just want to weigh out our flour. Um, you can do about one kg. This, this condiment should, should go around one kg of flour, but here I'm just going to do 500 grams of flour. Make sure your scale starts from zero when you put your bowl on. And in the center of my flour, what I want to do is create a well. Yeast is the next thing that goes in. But to add my yeast, I need about 10 grams of yeast. So I'm gonna take my, my scale back to zero. A lot of people will relate making pizza to baking. And baking can be very fun and consistent as long as you understand your ingredients and how it works. It's very important that you think about the temperature of the ingredients that you're working with as well as the temperature of the room, all right? Um, today, my room isn't so humid, so I'm going to use cold water to, to work this dough. If it's really hot in your room, your dough needs to be, your water has to be really icy cold. All right, so cold water. Okay, now I could put my salt in, but um, putting the salt in would affect the, the functionality of the yeast. So the yeast would not necessarily act the way it should. Um, it's almost like uh, putting salt on uh, an F1. You know how it would it would just stop, it would just kill it. Now the, 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 the salt is going to react with the yeast almost like that. So you sort of want the, the yeast already active before you put the salt in. So I'm going to put the water to get the yeast active. And here we're working with about one cup of water. So one cup of water, careful not to get ice in there. It's not ice cold, it's just cold, all right? And so I'm gonna put, mix that in together now. And now I'm gonna go for another half cup of water. Again, without my ice. So our dough is done. Pretty easy, no? All right, now we're going to preheat our oven to 220 degrees on a conventional heat, which is top and bottom. And while that's preheating, I'm going to take out a saturated pan. 
very important when you're making pizza, you need the air to go through the base of the pan so that you can get a really nice crust. If you don't have a saturated pan, don't fret. Just put some parchment paper over your, over your pan and um, put out your dough and you should be good. Okay, so my dough, I'm gonna cut into two. Uh, maybe a little more than two. Okay. Now, with a rolling pin, dusted with flour, just toss some flour over your dough. Okay. Nice and even. Okay. Now, to get a nice shape, I'm going to use different shapes. And that should give you a really nice shape. If you don't have, or you're not sure whether your pan is non-stick, all you need to do is take some uh, um, tissue, dab it in oil, and you just grease your pan. And then all you want to do is just flour this pan. The only reason why you're doing this is so that it doesn't stick and it comes off nice and easy, all right? So we have really nicely cut up pizza dough here. The next thing we're going to do is take our sauce, spread it over, put our condiments, grate some cheese, and pop it in the oven. Let's get started. Let's start with the cheese. I'm just gonna grab a bowl to move my sauce into. And with my sauce, Simple. Our toppings. Just placing them around nicely. Finally, our cheese. Start with the mozzarella first. All right, and it has to be generous. Otherwise, you're just gonna end up with a, a really dry looking pizza. You don't want that. And finally, my goat cheese. I'm just gonna put some fugu at the top of this. That's it. Now, time to bake. All right, I can smell the pizza. I just had the pizza oven go off, so we're gonna look in and see what we have. Oh, look at that. Ooh, smells delicious. Oh, look at that pizza. Delicious. Who knew a Nigerian pizza could look so good? I bet it's gonna taste amazing too. So, let's get cracking. Okay, so now all we're gonna do is cut this into nice slices. You use a knife, if you have a pizza cutter, all well and good, but a knife will do the trick. Just looks so good, and I bet it tastes equally as good. Just gonna go for a, a nice slice. Look at that pizza. Just check it out. And you can make this at home too. Let's taste here. Mm. It's delicious. The crust is amazing. It's nice and crusty. Um, it, it, it has the the nice palm oil taste, the goat meat is delicious, the, all those peppers and vegetables in there working nicely together. I mean, who said we can't have a Nigerian pizza? I am Chef Eros and this is Dishing Out with Andani TV. See you next time. Hi, I'm Onos. And if you did enjoy that video, which I know you did, you better subscribe to our channel and you can watch more videos too.